In program 3, we do FIR filtering. The first step is to produce an input function. This is uh, the equation for the signal given to us. Omega is a fixed parameter and n is the time. So um, if, you, if you take the Fourier transform, I mean, if, if you look at the Fourier response of the signal, it will look like a small peak that is centered at omega. So uh, when you call this function, omega will, will take on a fixed value, say 1.5 or something. And nx is the, the length of the generated signal. So n is going to take values between 0 and nx. So the output from this, this uh, function should be a signal s with nx plus 1 elements. So you would have a loop over n and then you would do s of n plus 1 because it's MATLAB and on the right hand side you do not do the plus 1 because you're not trying to access an array. So you do that plus 1 thing only when you are uh, when you have a vector and you're trying to access an element of that vector. So here it will still be the same equation. And this function should return, for a particular value of omega, it will return a signal. And if you take the Fourier response, it will look like that. The next part is to design an FIR bandpass filter. So the problem incorrectly says that uh, use, user chosen parameters h, because h is not actually the input, h is supposed to be the output. The inputs to the function would be the length of the filter nh and the cutoffs omega c1 and omega c2. So looking at it in frequency domain, a bandpass filter would look like this, the lower cutoff, the upper cutoff, magnitude of 1. If you take the inverse dtft, you get an expression like this. And it has been derived in the notes if you want to see. And uh, it looks like this. If you plot h of n, it will look something like that. But the thing is, it has an infinite number of samples and does not have any limits on it. So we have to truncate it to nh elements because uh, then it, it becomes a finite impulse response system. So the, the uh, so instead of taking these nh values, it's better to take the values in the middle. Now, the problem with doing that is uh, you will have negative indexes here. So to fix that, uh, because MATLAB does not allow negative indexes, you have to shift the whole thing to the right by some amount. So this is how the shifted version should look like. And uh, so in MATLAB, this would probably be location 1 or 0, or, and this would probably be NH. Uh, so how much do we shift? So uh, in this problem, nh is is the length of h. Usually, when I mean, if you if you go by convention, if if h has we we define h having nh plus elements. That that's what we typically say in these assignments. But nh is actually the the length of h, and nh will always be odd because it is, it is supposed to be symmetric and it, it has to have a value at time 0 so nh would be odd so uh, you would have one value in the middle and nh minus 1 over 2 values to the left here and nh minus 1 over 2 values on the right here so in total you have nh numbers and nh is an odd number so nh minus 1 is easily divisible by 2. And once you shift it, this is how it should look like. And when you're doing it in MATLAB, you would write your loop. Again, uh, typically you would you would have done n equals 0 to nh. But in this case, it has uh, nh elements. So starting from 0, you have to end at nh minus 1. And then you add a plus 1 because it's MATLAB. And then the same equation, but all the n's have been replaced by n minus nd because that's how you shift. You have to shift it by nd, uh, 
uh, you replace n with nd on the right hand side and the the shift is nh minus 1 over 2 now uh, when when you, when this is running at one point n will become equal to nd and at that time the denominator goes to 0 and this becomes infinite so we have to have an if condition here so if n is not equal to nd then this equation is fine but if n is equal to nd we have to compute the limit uh, and it's possible to do that and this is what you get you get omega c2 minus omega c1 over pi so this loop would produce a signal h with nh elements and that's what you would return. The next part is uh, to write a function called AMP. So the AMP function is basically a DTFT computation, but uh, it, it, uh, it, so if, because if the input signal is real, the DTFT the magnitude is symmetric on both sides so we don't really have to calculate the left hand side this much is going to be enough so this function uh, produces this kind of plot the magnitude response of the right hand side of the input so uh, in your regular DTFT this this omega it's a continuous variable omega takes values between minus pi to pi but an infinite number of values. It can take fractional values. So on a computer, we can only comp have so much memory. So let's say we will we will calculate it for nm points between 0 and pi. And in this problem, nm is 100. So we have divided this uh, uh, the frequencies between 0 and pi into nm elements. So at a particular value of k, k goes from 0 to nm, the frequency at this point, omega k, that's pi divided by nm. So this is pi divided by nm times k. Now instead of writing x e to the j omega, I can write x e to the j omega k. So I, I'm computing the DTFT only at particular frequencies, at particular frequencies omega k. And this is your, your original DTFT expression, right? Instead of, uh, yeah, minus infinity to infinity, you will write 0 to nx because xn is 0 outside this interval. And e to the negative j omega n. Instead of omega, I'm using omega k. And uh, this e to the negative j omega, this is being represented by z. So this, this kind of uh, reduces the math needed, but it's optional. Uh, so it will produce x e to the j omega k, or you will be storing it in x of k, or uh, as, as in the problem, it's referred to as a m of k. I mean, m is, m is not a variable, it's just the name. So you can say a of k or m of k, something like that. Now the, the inputs to this function would be the signal x, its length, and nm. How many points do you want on the DF, DTFT? That's the DTFT resolution. The output would be the DTFT of the signal and the omega axis. So the, this thing that we are computing, we will be returning it. So, uh, for each one of these points, we will we'll need to compute the DTFT. So we have a loop for omega, but there is no omega really. We have a loop for k because omega is a function of k. So the first step is to compute omega of k. So we do that with this equation. Then you compute z, which is that. Then this is nothing but the DTFT equation. So. Uh, so one thing you need to be careful here is that when you're computing the sum, do not take the absolute value because the absolute value is outside the sum. Once you've finished calculating the sum, then take the absolute value and then save it in x of k or 
if you want to call it am of k so x of k maybe makes more sense because it's the dtft and uh, this is how i think i already explained how do you compute a summation you you create an accumulator variable set it to zero then you have a loop for the sum and then you keep on adding the term inside the sum so uh, now to the actual task of the assignment so using the signal function we can produce signals which have a frequency peak at a particular omega so first we produce a signal that has a peak at 0.2 so if you call the signal function if you call this function s1 equals signal 0.2 comma nx where nx is 100 it will produce a signal that has a fourier transform or dtft like that then you call the function again with a different omega this time it will produce a function that has this peak in the fourier transform and then again a third signal and when you add them together the combined signal should have a, a fourier transform that looks like this so you generate three signals for three frequencies s1 s2 and s3 each one of them will have 100 elements or 101 right because 0 to nx that's uh, 0 to 100 that's 101 elements so that will produce x of n the actual signal x it will probably look very messy it will not have any of these uh, symmetries or you know uniformness but once you run the amp function on on x of n you should you should see something similar to this so make sure you get this much working and debug your amp function or your x of n function then the next part is to call the function d sign so that it passes this this peak in the center but it blocks out these two so you you basically need to produce a band pass filter that probably looks like that 0 1 and your two cutoffs and you can figure out what these cutoffs should be right because so that's something you have to decide what cutoff you want to choose So you figure out the cutoffs, and the filter length is going given as 65. So you will call your design function. So your design function, you will pass the input length in it as 65 on two cutoffs, and it should return uh, a filter h. So that h you need to plot it, and it it uh, it wouldn't actually look like that. sync function but something close to that because it's uh it will have a lot more fluctuation because it's a band pass filter it's not a loop pass filter then you have to call the amp function on this h or you can say we are plotting he to the j omega and it should look like a band pass filter so it will probably look like this and these uh cutoffs that you will see they will match uh, what you pass to the function now an important thing about the plot for uh, plot from amp is so the function must return this x so it should be x and we also need to return this array omega w because you are computing the value of omega at each point for each value of k so when you are making the plot instead of plotting 0 1 2 3 4 and 100 you should actually plot the the frequency in radians so that will be 0 pi and then maybe 0.5 
zero one whatever that increment is so make sure you return this omega also and whenever you call the amp function I mean whenever you are making this kind of a plot make sure you do a plot omega comma I mean let's say x if, if x has the Fourier transform so this is the x-axis this is the y-axis and again for the amp function use the plot function uh, don't use them because this is supposed to be a continuous function omega is supposed to be continuous even though we have calculated it at specific points it's supposed to be continuous so this plot again would be between 0 and pi and this would be your uh, whatever you chose for omega 1 this would be omega c2 this should be close to 1 so once you have uh, plotted h and plotted the amplitude response and verified it looks ok you can convolve x and h for convolution uh, you can use any function you can even use the built in MATLAB con convolution function that's ok and if you are using the convolution function you wrote in programs 1, 2 or 3 you would need to pass x nx h and uh, one one strange thing here is that you will need to pass nh minus one because if you remember I said that h has nh elements it doesn't have nh plus one element so this is a, a slight discrepancy in the problem so either use that or call the convolution function with the current correct length so it will produce your signal y and again it would look uh, I mean, it wouldn't have a specific shape it will it, kind of look random but when you plot the frequency response you should only see the middle peak so it should be something close to that Five, zero. and again make sure you use the plot function not the stem function for any of these plots any of these uh, so y of n would be a stem plot something like that and but the Fourier transform make sure you use the plot function and ideally your submission should only have eight plots only have six plots which I have defined here x the amplitude response of x h amplitude response of h y and uh, y to the j omega and yeah that's it